Hi everyone, Stepan here uh, with another game. <coughs> I've been working on the Karo Khan series and the Symmetrical English for the past, <coughs> excuse me, few days. So I haven't been recording training games. Now I'm back to recording them. Uh, we have the Dutch against the London system, one of my favorite openings. I've never played this guy. He's from Finland. Okay, uh, now this... Probably I can just go h4 and he has to go h6. I'm trying to remember the lines. So h4, if he doesn't play h6, I go h5. If he does go h6, <coughs> I'm weakening the g6 pawn, so I'm going to try h4. Uh, I know that this is correct. Uh, it's supposed to undermine the Leningrad structure straight away. I do, however, give away the g4 square, but I give my bishop h2. Okay, now I think I can play with c4, knight c3, or simply knight c3, and even bishop d3, but I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go c4, because that's the most active. Uh, I don't think there's a downside to, to claiming some more central space. I want to go knight e4, uh, knight f3, knight e5, uh, if allowed. He is going to go d6, and I have to be preventing e5. And once this bishop lines up on the diagonal with the queen, uh, you're going to see why provoking h6 was useful. Uh, g6 is going to be severely weakened, and I can also continue bishop d3, uh, followed by h5, and after g5, uh, if my bishop had already retreated, I can take on f5. Okay, now uh, let's just play against e5 for the moment. <clears throat> Knight h5 can always be met with bishop h2. So that seems okay. Uh, it's an okay position if he doesn't play e5, in my opinion. This is a good Leningrad for, for me because he had to play h6. And there's a weakness on c7, which I may be able to target with something like knight b5, uh, if the queen moves too early. Prevents that, good. Probably planning to go queen b6, or queen c7, supporting e5. If he does go queen c7, that's still not enough. So I'm just going to prevent knight e4, and get my queen developed. This other knight, where's the other knight going? <clears throat> if he plays knight a6, I don't think I go a3, preventing knight b4. I don't think that's necessary. Unless he wants to go c5 as well after knight b4, which would be bad for his structure, I feel. I just want my bishop on d3. I want to have pressure down the diagonal, and I want to castle queen side, play rook dg1, and g4. The Dutch is usually an attacking opening with which black tries to attack white's king side, but okay, now this prevents bishop d3, which is my normal move. Uh, so maybe I do go a3. The knight goes to c7, preparing d5 in some positions, but d5 could have already been played. One thing is for certain that I cannot go bishop d3. Well, what do I do if I don't go bishop d3? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going a6, a3. Uh, I want to go bishop d3. I don't want to castle queenside before I play bishop d3. This knight wants to go to c7 anyway. a3 wasn't a useful move because the knight was only threatening to go to b4 if I go bishop d3. But I don't see a way to go bishop d3 unless I play a3. So 
this seemed sensible to me. Also, I may choose to go rook d1 instead of castling queenside. Maybe. If c5, I definitely go d5. Uh, I don't want to... Well, if c5, I could take and give his knight the e4 square, but then I get the d file. Hmm. I'm not sure. So yeah, I haven't been recording training games. Okay, wants to go knight b4 anyway. <clears throat> and wants to go knight e4. So the only move that prevents both ideas is knight d2. That's a common idea in some uh, Queen's Indian slash Nimzo Indian slash Rakosin lines, I think. So knight d2, preventing knight e4, preventing knight b4, unpinning my knight. But giving him e5, unless I have b4. So knight d2, e5, b4. Queen c7 still supports e5. So I take, he takes with the d-pawn. Why is my knight on d2? So if I don't go knight d2, I need to castle queen side to defend against both threats. If I castle queen side, e5 is covered. If I go knight d2, he goes e5. I think I'm gonna castle queen side. Because this defends against knight b4, knight e4, and e5. And b5 cannot be played because I just take it. Now I can still safely go bishop d3, my pawn isn't pinned to my rook anymore. My position feels harmonious, although d5 could disrupt the harmony. I do get the e5 square and I don't think he should play d5 because of knight e5, knight g6, but it does give him the e4 square. Because I don't want to take on d5 opening up the c file. So d5, knight e5, knight e4 takes, f takes, knight g6, seems good. Because he cannot throw in bishop e5, because after bishop e5 his rook is attacked and I'd be a piece up. So he either moves the knight and plays e5, but since my rook is already on the d-file, that seems a bit more scary. Or he castles kingside, which seems very scary. I don't know. If, if b5 cannot be played, which I don't think it can. So let's look at it. b5, cb, cb, knight b. Or even bishop b. Okay, he wants to go e5. Okay, okay. I'm going bishop h2. And if he goes e5... He does go e5. <clears throat> Very scary looking. So takes, takes. Can I go rook d6? Ok, 
Can I go G4? Oof, G4 seems interesting. G4, E4, takes. G4, E, D, G4 seems interesting. Because where does the knight go? The question is, do I take first and then go g4? No, because he could take with the bishop. So g4, if knight f6, I just win a pawn. If fg4, I take on g6. <clears throat> If e d4, I take with the pawn, open up the d file. If e4, I can take on h5. He takes on f3, I take on g6. I'm playing g4. Now you can see why provoking h6 was useful. Maybe I should have taken on e5 first. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Because in some lines, let's say knight f6, uh, d5, he may be able to go fg4, followed by bishop f5. That's the one thing I don't like about this. I'm counting on the move e4. No, no, he cannot do that because I just played queen g6. Okay, so this is fine. Yeah, now I just win a pawn. Unless he wants to take on g4 with the knight. So takes knight g4, takes on d6. Or maybe I can throw in gf, bishop f, e4. And then if he takes on d4, I take with the knight. Maybe that's not good enough. So d, knight g4. E, D. I have a passed pawn on the D file. That has to be good enough. I'm going for this. And he still cannot take F, G because of Queen, G6.
And he cannot play d e because of bishop takes. And on knight g4 I take on g7, on fg4 I take on g6. Okay, now my plan was to take on d6. But he may have bishop c3, queen c3, queen c3, bc3, knight f2. So maybe rook d6. Yeah, I'm gonna take with the rook because I don't want to run into knight f2 losing the exchange. I basically don't want him to take bishop c3, weakening my f pawn and weakening my a pawn. I know that I'm giving the pawn back or trading it for the g6 pawn if he wants to take it. But I need to get rid of this knight on g4. So now if knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, bishop e5, queen e5, rook g6. Seems like a safe one up and his king is just stuck in the middle of the board. If knight h2, I have to take with the knight, because if I take with the rook, he goes bishop e5 and wins the exchange. So knight h2, knight h2, bishop e5, rook g6. He wishes his age pawn was on age seven. <laughs> Everything is loose because of age six. Mm. 
And if I can play f4, so if he doesn't take now, then passed pawn on e5. Okay, so now I have to take on g6. Am I losing anything to bishop h2? I don't think so. If he takes on c3, we have to trade queens and I'm just a pawn up. Not the perfect pawn structure, and he does have the bishop pair, but still, a pawn is a pawn. Now I want to double up on the g-file. Definitely play knight f3. He can play knight c5, knight e4, targeting all of my pawns. So how do I defend against knight e4? Bishop g2 seems sensible because I threatened rook c6. Yeah, that does seem okay. Bishop g2. If knight d3, uh, king c2, knight f2, rook f1. Also seems fine. So bishop g2, knight d3. King c2, knight f2, rook f1, knight e4. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't allow that. Uh, so let's just defend with king c2, I guess. On king c2 he may have f4. Or he, he definitely has f4 on king c2. So I'm thinking about rook hg1 and the knight e4. Uh, I just check on g8. So rook hg1, he probably plays king f8. I'm playing rook hg1. I'm gonna allow knight e4 if he wants to do that because the threat of cutting his or preventing him from developing the bishop is too strong. Knight e4 I feel would be a blunder, he needs to go king f8. Or that, okay, that's also okay. But now he cannot go knight e4. So that's good. Uh, 
How do I put pressure on that knight? I'm just gonna go knight f3 and bring my knight back into play. I wanna go knight d4 and put pressure on the bishop. If he goes bishop f7, I'm going rook g7. Followed by uh, knight e5 or knight d4. Now I like knight d4. Uh, Cuz it threatens to win the f pawn and if bishop f7 then rook g7. If knight d3 I take it, if knight e4 well we're going to think about that later. Let's just bring the knight into play for now. Okay. He still wants to go knight e4. So maybe I can just prevent that with f3. Although I really don't like the idea of playing f3. But then again, if I go f3, I can answer f4 with e4 and I can play bishop h3. I think I want to limit this knight, so I'm going f3. I don't think he has enough pressure to put on the, on the e3 pawn. I'm gonna go h3, bishop h3, before he doubles the rooks. Can't I go e4? That was the whole idea. Is he going to take? No, he cannot take. I don't get this. Maybe he is just playing against my bishop, but now I have a passed pawn on the e file.
I don't get this at all. I don't get this. Now I can just go bishop h3. I think f4 was a huge mistake, completely justifying f3. Okay, so let's trade that. <clears throat> How does he save the f pawn? He wants to go knight. Ah, oh, he wants to go knight e5. He wants to go knight e5, maybe followed by c5. Okay, so if I go rook 6 to g4, I don't have an easy way to cover e5, that worries me a lot. So rook 6 to g4, rook f8, uh, knight f5 can be taken, although not yet. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this. This plays against knight e5, because if he goes knight e5, I take on, on, on f4. And if he goes rook f8, I go knight f5. Now knight f5, preventing knight e5, threatening to take on f4, and threatening knight d6. How does he re respond to that? If knight f5, knight e5, then knight d6 check. Seems fine to me. Can he take on f5? No.
Okay. I think I can get away with this. I think. Ah, no! I missed knight f2 check. I missed knight f2 check. But okay, there's nothing else I can do now. Still, I'm not sure who's better here. I have two pawns for the exchange. I think I'd rather be white. It's not easy for him to create a passed pawn. I have to move my king before playing g5 because I need my king to defend g5 with king f4. My next move is going to be g5. I feel like white is much better here. I mean, my past pawns are very scary. I don't think he can afford to take that pawn. Why did I play king f4 instead of king g4? What's wrong with me? I should have played king g4 so that I can go king h5. Two past pawns.
Sorry for not talking. There's no way I can talk now. I think this is it. I could be wrong, but I think we're winning this. He cannot queen because I made him. He has to take the pawn. What? Okay. This was very tense. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, let's have a look at the game. Jesus. Okay. Wow. Uh, let's see the chat. Uh, is White winning? If spectators, if spectators chat here, does the disturb the players no they see comments after the game the player wants blah 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 no they don't see it uh, black can stop both pawns from mode but white mates i can win against hikaru with white in that position everybody can do that blah 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 rampage of queens yeah uh, very tense game now let's let's start here uh in this position h4 is the main move which is what i played and h6 is absolutely forced if you do something else like bishop g7 then h5 happens and this becomes extremely unpleasant if knight h5 then white is winning outright with queen h5 king f8 is forced and now i don't know take the pawn on f5 or something uh uh okay so c4 Bishop g7. Wait, Kuros is saying in the chat that black had a win? Okay, I didn't see it. We will get to that. Uh, okay, this is all fine. White is slightly better. I made three blunders. Okay, that, that's not good. Okay, a3. Was a3 necessary? c5. Okay. Castles, rook d1 was better, but castles is okay. I didn't want to allow knight e4 or knight g4. 
okay bishop h2 and e5 c5 was best g4 is good though g4 is fine gf5 first no why why okay gf5 bishop f5 what if bishop f5 i just go e4 no bishop d3 yeah bishop d3 wins the pawn because he cannot go e4 on bishop d3 he takes takes and if he goes e4 i play i play knight e4 uh, knight g4 rook d6 is fine knight h2 wait i could have gone rook h2 on rook h2 doesn't he just take on e5 how do i save my stuff i threaten mate is this really mate I uh, know I just pick up the rook in the corner. Okay. Rook g6, bishop c3. This endgame has to be good for me. Knight f3 is fine. Castle's queen side is fine. Knight d4 is fine. Bishop d7. f3 is not precise, but he doesn't have time to target the pawn. He should have gone rook h e8. Okay. e4 is better than e4 yeah i just hold on to the pawn i have f5 okay rook f6 instead of bishop h3 so i could have just picked up the pawn but this is okay bishop d7 knight d7 okay this is okay Rook g7, what's the point? What if he goes knight e5? c5. Okay, so basically I have to keep my knight here to keep defending f3 and I'm better. I moved my knight away. Okay, so I'm still better. But king e2 doesn't hang the rook on, on f4. King b8. Yeah, I'd, I'd completely missed this idea of knight f2. But rook g4 is winning, so good for me that I missed it. I missed it, but this is a winning endgame because I have too many passed pawns. Yeah, my pawns are just winning. Wait, knight e3 draw? Okay, knight e3 does seem like a waste of time. But I wanted to defend this pawn. It seemed like I shouldn't give him the third rank for free. Okay. Instead of that, knight h6. Let's say he takes the pawn. I just go, yeah, I just go g6. <sighs> draw, draw, draw. Draw. He had to go rook g1. Okay. g7. e7 check was more precise. But this is still okay. Rook g1. King f6. e7 check. King f7 was better. I played knight c7. So on king f7, what if he checks me? I just go knight f6. Oh, why didn't I see this? Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Okay, g8 queen. Okay, b6. Is this what Kouros was talking about? Ah, no, 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 he was talking about something. Ah, oh, wait, I queen and he's winning? Yeah, I had to prevent b6. I didn't think it was strong. So let's see, he has a mate in 4. b6. King b5 or king b4 is forced. Yeah, and then he, he mates me on a1. Oh! Uh, 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 uh. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't see that. 
Okay, uh, this was a fun game. I did manage to win. It wasn't clean, but okay. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.